is a presentation of the day. The rematch. For Daniel Hand and its super sophomore Chase Jeremiah, it provides an opportunity to send a message that last year's state championship was just a taste of what's to come, and the Tigers are for real and looking to repeat. For St. Bernard, it's a chance to avenge last year's semifinal loss and alert the state that they are determined to be champions. Four returning starters and some key additions have the Saints confident and eager to prove themselves. Both think they are poised for big things, but only one can win the rematch. Two teams with big aspirations settle the score at the Day Holiday Classic at the Mohegan Sun, live on game day. Game two, rematch two. State champion Daniel Hand and the St. Bernard Saints ready to tip it off here at Mohegan Sun in game two of the day holiday classic. And all the action is live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Ambassador Limo. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeur transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or just a reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at AmbassadorLimo.com. Casey O'Neill, along with the coach, Chris Juicy, and uh, you know, as great as the first game was, I'm very excited about this one because I think these two teams uh, are really made to play competitive games against each other. The semifinal last year was brilliant. And this is the chance for a lot of super sophomores to make their uh, names even more known around the state. And once again, maybe a preview of a future uh, state tournament game, maybe a state tournament final. Maybe these two teams will meet again um, on this floor. But a lot of hype around the St. Bernard Saints this season. Obviously, Mark Jones has uh, completely built this program back to prominence in our area here in Eastern Connecticut. But uh, don't sleep on the Daniel Hand Tigers. A couple of years ago, they were a skid mark um, on many teams' path to a successful season. But Coach Jimmy Eco has built a successful program of his own. So both uh, tremendous coaches who have built programs up in their communities. These kids that are on the floor love playing basketball, and we're going to see that tonight. Well, another thing we're going to see tonight is our own George Hathaway. He's got it on the sideline. George, what do you got? Thank you, guys. The atmosphere is very hype uh, leading up to this matchup between the Tigers and the Saints. And being able to talk to both coaches before the game, they both agreed that this is going to be a very exciting game. And for St. Bernard's, they have a lot more to prove after losing last year into the semifinals to Daniel Hand. So they're going to come out firing, and they're going to come out very excited. Back to you, Casey. Thank you, George. You know, Coach, we talked about the super sophomores and Chase Jeremiah last year. Not only did Daniel Hand make a run to the state championship, they did so by knocking out all ECC teams. They were the ECC killers last year. And uh, we got a chance here on game day to watch Jeremiah emerge. You know, you don't see a freshman point guard lead a team to a state championship. If you do, they're usually poised for greatness in their careers. Jeremiah did that. He loses his brother to prep school, welcomes in another great freshman in Elijah Avery Turner. But this team is now solidly Chase Jeremiah's team, and he's an exciting sophomore. Yeah, he reminds me a lot of a player that experienced a lot of success in our league, uh, Chris Lowry. He's a little bit bigger and stronger and, and maybe has uh, come into his own a little faster, but he makes everybody on his team better, but he also can score the ball. He can shoot it from the outside. He can drive to the basket. I mean, he does everything, and we're going to see that tonight. St. Bernard's is going to have to make sure that he doesn't get going. Well, St. Bernard's has their own set of super sophomores. Amir Gray and Amari Marshall came into their own last year. This is very much Amir Gray's team with the ball in his hands, but it's the seniors. Cedric Similian, Tyson Wheeler, and incoming Ryan Outlow that are going to make this team go. And I know you had a, a strategy against East Lime and their sharpshooting three-point guy. The same one applies here, which is any open look Tyson gets, someone should have their defensive card revoked. A hundred percent, you know, and 
talking to Mark Jones earlier this week, you know, the fact that Cedric and Tyson stayed four years to see this through, that means a lot. And they play with a lot of pride for this red and silver team, the, the Saints, the St. Saint Bernards. And um, you're gonna see that tonight, that these guys care about each other and they wanna play for each other. All right, let's send it to our PA announcer, Bill Glennie. Sides playing a rematch of last year's Division Three semifinal as the Saints of St. Bernard's. Take on the Daniel Hand Tigers. Your officials tonight, Mr. A.J. Ginelli, Mr. Rob Bono, and Mr. Merrick Drabinski. At this time, we'd like to direct your attention to the Jumbotron as the day and game day introduce tonight's players. Tyler Maynard, the Jeffrey Elementary. Aiden Doyle, Jeffrey Elementary School. Chase Jeremiah, the Island Avenue. Jacob Rockler, the Island Avenue. Tajir Anuzi, the Ryerson Elementary School. Nick Paolola, Beach Road Elementary School. Kyle Hoffman, Jeffrey Elementary. Orion Bruckner, the Island of. David Howe, Ryerson Elementary. Elijah Avery Turner, the Island Elementary. Andrew Anabago, Redwood School, West Orange, New Jersey. Chase Docker, Jeffrey Elementary. Sam Markowitz, Jeffrey Elementary. Jack Tompkins, Jeffrey Elementary. Cedric Samillion, the Trench City School. Shem Adams, Family Elementary. Ty Gusian, the St. James School. Amir Gray, Garrett Hill Elementary. Colin O'Leary, S.B. Butler Elementary. Justin Allo, Where's the Funk Elementary. Tyson Wheeler, A.A. Ron Elementary. Alex Johnson, Wyndham Tech Elementary. Jack Philstein, RMS Elementary. Ryan Allo, AFRO Academy. Zane Bayton, Shamit Central School. Anthony DeMarco, The St. James School. Omari Marshall, RMS Elementary. Jigo Widener, DHW Elementary School. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet your starting lineups. Playing out of the ECC, St. Bernard's has started the season with wins over Norwich Free Academy and Prince Tech. They will be home on Thursday, hoaxing Fitch. They are led by coach Mark Jones, wearing their traditional red jerseys with white lettering. Saints fans, put your hands together. Let's meet your starting five. Starting at guard, a six-foot senior, number one, Cedric Similian. <laughs> Starting at guard, a five-foot-nine sophomore, number four, Amir Gray. <laughs> Starting at guard, a five-foot-eight senior, number 12, Tyson Wheeler. Starting at center, a six foot three senior number 15, Ryan Outlow. And starting at forward, a six foot six sophomore number 24, Amari Marshall. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the Daniel Hand Tigers. Members of the SEC, wins over Fairfield Prep and Morgan have the Tigers at 2-0. It's a short rest. They host Shelton tomorrow night. Led by head coach Jimmy Economopoulos. They're wearing their classic white with black and gold lettering. Tiger fans, let's hear you roar. Here's your starting five. Starting at guard, a six foot two sophomore, number two, Chase Jeremiah. <laughs> Starting at guard, a six foot one senior, number three, Jacob Rockler. <laughs> Starting at guard, a six foot two junior, number 11, Kyle Hoffman. 
Starting at forward, a six foot three senior, number 13, David Howe. And starting at guard, a six foot three freshman, number 14, Elijah Avery Turner. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being performed by Ariana Simo, a sophomore at Daniel Hand High School. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ariana Simo of Daniel Hand High School. Oh, for some fresh squeezed juice. The keys to the game are brought to you by the Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. They're located at 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Juice, squeeze it for us. For Daniel Hand, Chase, what matters? Lots of new faces, but the all everything point guard is back. Get him the ball and let him orchestrate the offense. Tempo control. Keep it a half-court game. Don't let St. B's get out and run. Smart offense, get back on defense. And if you first don't succeed, crash the offensive glass and get second chance opportunities. For St. Bernard's, sharing is caring. Push the ball up court, move the ball, find the open man. Junkyard, St. Bernard, got to be physical in the paint and secure rebounds. Don't leak out early, five on the defensive glass. And don't be wasteful. You don't want any of your top five to be in foul trouble. No cheap fouls. We are ready to tip it off. Amari Marshall for the Saints in the red and David Howe in the white for Daniel Hint. AJ Ganelli will throw it up. Officials Ganelli, Bono, and Drabinski. And there's our first look at Chase Jeremiah. And I have a, a funny Jeremiah story for you in a moment as he dumps in the high post to Howe. Casey St. Bernard's in man-to-man -man defense. They'll play that a lot. Wheeler gets the assignment on Jeremiah. They jump him, nice look down to Howe. Made a mistake putting it on the floor, but he's gonna get a foul and Outlaw will get him, so Howe will go and shoot two. Great look as they jump Jeremiah up high. Uh, I think if Howe didn't put it to the floor, he has an easy layup. Yeah, that was a classic show and stay on the screen. Ryan Outlow shows up high, so Jeremiah can't turn the corner. A little late getting back, committed the fall. So back in fifth or sixth grade, I'm coaching travel in Colchester, and we go to this tournament. 
and the A team, uh, Madison Black, which was like their super elite A team, is playing the game before us. And I see then, of course you walk in in fifth and sixth grade and you look for size, and there's this one big tall kid, and he jumps, right? Wins the jump, the guy gives it immediately back to him, he runs the point, posts up, and I went, who the heck is this kid? He's knocking down threes, it was Chase Jeremiah. Daniel Hands also in man to man. Open look for Similian, long three, back iron no good. Marshall though with the rebound. And a nice spin move with the right hand. And I think if St. Bernard, I think Amari Marshall's a huge key for St. Bernard's. When he is active, they are a much different team to play against. Freshman on sophomore there. There's a three, back iron no good and how tips it out of bounds, it'll be Saints ball. Once again, we're seeing a lot of what we saw in that first game, Casey. The three-point shot is tantalizing. That college three-point line, it looks like you're wide open, but that shot is much further away. It's hard to get that depth perception. Amir Gray, nice defense. Jeremiah on Similian. Daniel Hand not shying away from coming out and playing man-to-man, -man, far out on the perimeter. Wheeler pulls up, 12-footer, no good. Strong rebound by Rockler. He loses it and gets it back. The Saints will pressure early and often in the backcourt. Jeremiah with numbers, drives. That ball's loose, off to the races. Similian, reverse, no good, no foul, and Gray It'll be knocked out of bounds, and I think Similian is a victim of just being a little bit out of control. Yeah, I thought he had an open layup, good recovery. Coach Eco at the beginning of the game says, we gotta get back, gotta get back on D, and we'll have a good chance. Now, I know it's a uh, it's a no-no to bring your cell phone on the bench with you as a player or a coach, but if anybody has a reason to have their cell phone with them tonight, it's Coach Economopoulos, and why is that? His wife is due today with their second baby girl, but right now she's hanging tight and uh, hopefully watching the game on theday.com, but what a saint. That's an MVP right moment right there. Honey, I'll stay out of labor through the class. There's the name, by the way. Little Classic Economopolis. <laughs> There's the name, I'm telling you. Similian knocks it down in the lane. Oh, good look, Jeremiah, and Howe can't get that one to go over Outlaw. Great look. Marshall, you can pressure him on the perimeter. He's learning out there, starting to drift away a little bit, but there's where he's more comfortable, down in the paint. Swing, Smillion drives, hangs. Oh, the scintillating one for two. Love the decision-making by Cedric. The last two possessions, passed up the open three, got into the lane, much easier to score. Good look. Uh, the freshman deferred. I'd like to see him go all the way to the hoop with that. Here goes Jeremiah, hangs in the air. Can't get it to go, Marshall, but stripped. And Wheeler comes out of it. The Saints look to run, they have numbers. Marshall blocked by Jeremiah. He is not used to that. And they're gonna get a backcourt on Elijah Avery Turner. Yeah, he's still learning. Amari's still learning. You know, there's a hard pump fake. Go right by that guy. And he's adjusting with Outlaw in the lineup. He's adjusting to playing on the perimeter a little bit more. And he's still learning because you can, you know, he's getting pressured and he's getting looks. And like you said, I'd just like to go by him. And, and, and he will. By the time we see him in March, he will. Similian pulls up short. Gray, though, hustling. Saints relentless. And Outlow ends up with it. Baseline pulls it up and can't get it to go, but Simil uh, Marshall with a tip in and an early timeout. Hand will take the timeout, down six. And the Saints pressure clearly bothering them in the early going. Yeah, um, obviously the tenacity on for the second chance opportunities in the loose balls um, has been going St. Bernard's way right now. And 
If that doesn't get corrected, this could get ugly quick because the key to Daniel Hand staying around is limiting St. Bernard's to one shot. If you're gonna give them second, third, fourth opportunities or, or turnover opportunities, it's gonna become a track meet. There are so many ways for the Saints to score. They have great three-point shooting in Gray and Wheeler. Gray can get to the basket, out low underneath. But when Similian and Marshall get cleanup points, it's disheartening. You know, you, you, you try to keep them off the glass, but there's just, they are relentless. Most times you play a team, there's a guy or two that you don't really have to worry about. That's not the case. Every single one of these Saints can score. And so strong, I mean, Look at Cedric, he's, he looks like a middle linebacker. Stripped by Gray, but Marshall loses it back. And a travel. Now, two turnovers by the freshman. And if, if I could have picked one kid who might take a minute to settle in, it's a lot to ask. You played two games in your high school career, and now you're at Mohegan Sun. So, Elijah Avery Turner is going to be a good player, but right now, I think there's just a little bit of the bright light's got to settle. Yeah, and Coach Jones has told his team that for sure. Marshall a little out of control, but it ends up in Outlow's hands. Outlow bullies his way to the basket and scores. And there's a dimension, though, that they did not have last year. Ryan Outlow is a big body and can score around the basket, and he will play bully ball. Yeah, when he gets that little move where he could get a couple dribbles, power dribble and land on two, that's when he's at his best. Jeremiah. Spin, kicks out, baseline jumper, how no good, rebound, out low. Gray in the other direction now for the Saints. Similian, that's a little out of control, no good, good defense. And Jeremiah looking up for the Tigers. Throws it up, looking for a call, and he's not gonna get one, and he landed hard, but it'll stay here. And our first sub of the game, Nick Paolella comes in. Now, I wanna give a very special shout out to a guy who was the best Saints basketball player, hands down, no offense, Mike Bassetto, wherever you are out there, or Will Flowers. The best player ever, the Harold Presley, is watching us right now from California. Harold, I was watching you when I was a kid at New London High School. When you came in and brought that Saints team, I'm glad to have you on the broadcast. Can't wait to hear what you think about this group of Saints out to the early lead. Wheeler for three, no good. Outlaw with the rebound, tough to keep them off the glass. That's been the difference so far. Civilian for three, no good. Paolella chases down the rebound. Touchdown up ahead, Jeremiah throws, pump fake. And The Rock says, a basket in the paint, Jacob Rockler. Yeah, Daniel Hand's got to find that secondary score. Who's going to emerge and get some points? We know Jeremiah can score, but you know Coach Jones is going to try to take him away, make him give up the ball. So who on Daniel Hand is going to get the points? Wheeler, kick out, Similian drives. A little bit out of control, but look at Marshall. Cleaning it up underneath, no answer for Amari Marshall. Definitely more assertive player on the glass than we saw uh, the other night against NFA. Spin, hang, drive, no good, gets his own rebound. Does a freshman Elijah Avery Turner. Oh, good reach by Gray. Saints turning up the pressure. Jeremiah, NBA three, straightaway back iron, no good. And that'll be up and over Saints ball with an eight point lead. Yeah, the, the, the movement of the Saints in the paint around the basket when the ball goes up is giving Daniel Hand problems. They can't check out on defense and they're having a hard time getting any semblance of a second chance opportunity. That was a key to the game and St. Bernard's right now has been excellent on the glass. 0 for 6 in three point attempts, the two teams between them. Uncharacteristic. Marshall spins, hangs. Tipped out to Gray. And Outlow loses it. It's loose on the floor. Outlow gets it. And it ends up in Gray's hands. Baseline, hang. No fear. Amir to the basket for two. 
Once again, scrapping, getting on the floor. How many times has Gray been on the floor already today? They're just out hustling the Tigers right now. I will tell you, there is no team that wants to win by 30 in this game. I mean, the Saints have been circling this matchup since when it was announced. They want desperately to avenge that loss last year. This is a team that really believes, and we'll talk a little bit about their early season schedule. They already played Prince Tech. They got them this tonight. They've got Ridgefield. They've got Northwest Catholic. They've got Immaculate. They have got an incredible schedule. And that's because Coach Mark Jones wants to win a state championship, and that's, this is the way to do it. Jeremiah. And Paolella traveling in the paint. It's just really sound man-to-man -man defensive principles here. You see Outlow jump out on the high ball screen, and it's critical that the help side defense, in this case it was Amari Marshall, get over to cover on the pick and roll. He was there, forced to travel. Wheeler at the buzzer for three, just short. We're at the end of one. 14-4, your Saints are on the lead. Second quarter action. You're watching Game Day Live on the Day.com. The Holy Club the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. Featuring Foresight Sports Simulator technology, you can test your game on the greatest courses in the world. Want to improve your swing? Schedule a lesson with their on-site PGA Pro. Want to host an event? The lounge offers the perfect setting to watch all the big games. Gift cards are available and make the perfect stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Don't wait, stop by the Holy Club 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeured transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at ambassadorlimo.com. A 10 point Saint lead here in the early part of the ball game, whereas we are about to start the second quarter. And one more to go tonight, 8 o'clock tip of the NFA Wildcats, who have impressed me. I've seen them this year twice, and they've impressed me uh, against my alma mater, the New London Whalers, who have also impressed me. George, what do you got? Listening into the Daniel Hand huddle uh, right before they stepped out onto the court, coach was just saying that St. Bernard's is out hustling them on the court. They're diving for those loose balls, but it's that extra effort that has, you know, the, uh, Daniel Hand down right now. So they're going to have to be attacking more and playing more physical, and as well as diving for those 50-50 balls. Back to you guys. Thank you, George. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to get out played, but to get out worked and out hustled is not something that a coach tolerates well. Going to get a foul on Wheeler with a hold. Yeah, well, once again, similar to what we saw in the first game, the Tigers got to establish a good set here and get a good shot off. Don't force a wild three or an early three. Run some stuff, get a good shot. I think you got to use the Saints pressure against them, against them. Look for some cuts. Can't get the friendly rebound. Instead, we're going to get a foul on the perimeter. I, I you know. In the first game, if you watch the first half, or a quarter and a half, you were saying, is East Catholic that good? I mean, you know, they're so vanilla, you know? But it's that same vanilla when done correctly that you saw go on an 18-0 run to start the quarter, which is they're just fundamentally sound, they're deliberate, right? Similarly, Hand has to use the Saints' aggression and their desire to play things to their advantage. Good look inside and over the top. Nick Paolella for two. Right on cue, Casey. Took advantage of a mismatch inside. Wheeler, step back, three, no good. Strong rebound and kick out by Paolella. Pushing it is Markovitz. Wheeler doing a good job on Jeremiah. Drive. Little weave action here by Hand. Weak side, Gray knocks it out of Markovic's hand. So St. Bernard's is switching on guard, guard screens. So right there, Gray was on Jeremiah. They set a little flare screen, and, and Wheeler picked it up. Tigers couldn't get anything going there. 
So two sophomores on the floor, but it's really what we talked about. Similian and Wheeler, the two seniors that are the anchors of this team. It could be, you know, stars in their own right. Blocked by Marshall. He made, he uh, cleaned up the mistake made there by O'Leary. When you have a guy who can clean up your mistakes, that's what makes a great team. Jeremiah, open, quick trigger, three, no good. O'Leary with the rebound, gives it up to Gray. And a foul on the perimeter, Jeremiah reaching in, and Amir Gray draws the foul. Last couple of possessions, the Tigers have gotten some good looks. They didn't fall all the time, but they're starting to get some better looks. Got to keep attacking, keep running their stuff. Gray looking for a screen, drives. Nice look to Similian, but a hand by Paolella knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Saints. And here's an interesting sub for St. Bernard's. Ty Grudzian comes in. He's a freshman, and young man is very, very talented. And Mark Jones has said, I am determined to get him minutes because they know that they need to develop another point guard on the other side of Amir Gray. And he is going to get meaningful minutes here. Jeremiah splits a double team, and he'll be fouled by, looks like Amir Gray or Amari Marshall, who's a foul on, it's on Gray. So right now, you've seen O'Leary and Grudzian come in, you're gonna see Justin Outlaw, but there are three important players that the Saints don't have right now that will be a part of their rotation moving forward. You're gonna have Alex Johnson, who has to sit out, he's a transfer from Wyndham Tech, so he's sitting out some games, and he'll be in the lineup. You're gonna have uh, Philistine uh, is going to be part of their rotation. Jack Philistine, who's the quarterback, only a sophomore, 6'3", big body. And then you're also going to see Jonah Eddy as well. Who's, so there's a host of St. Bernard's guys still on the shelf coming back. So Mark Jones trying to incorporate this team with more people coming. Yeah, and he's going to let these guys take their lumps a little bit so they can learn how to play the right kind of defense that he requires from them. Jeremiah had it stripped by Amari Marshall. It went right into the hands of Grudzian, and he's going to go to the line and shoot two. Talking to Coach Jones, you know, he's going to give guys freedom on offense. We saw a couple step back threes already taken. He doesn't really get all over them for that kind of shot, but they must, they absolutely must get down and defend man to man. He's not going to tolerate when guys allow blow bys, allow open jump shots. Jeremiah will get a breather here with 538 remaining in the half. So let's see where the points are gonna come from now and who's gonna distribute. One of two for the freshman. Two fouls on Jeremiah case. Aiden Doyle with the ball in his hands. Nice step in steal. Grudzian feeds Similian. And Similian for two at the rim. That's why Coach Jones likes Grudzian. What a pass in stride to a sprinting Cedric Similian. Oh, nice look. Doyle finds Hoffman. You can see there's a lot more holes in that defense, though. You got you got the second, some of the second unit out there. So, but Mark's gonna live with that right now with the lead because he needs the, these guys to get up to speed. Similian, Gray, Grudzian, Marshall, and O'Leary. Gray. Breaks down off the dribble. Spins, hangs, and can't get it to go. It's tipped. And Doyle saves it, though, goes to Gray underneath. Similian finishes at the rim. Another loose ball. St. Bernard's makes the Tigers pick. Swing. Three over Marshall is buried by Kyle Hoffman. Big three for Hoffman. Cuts the lead to six. And 
And Jones doesn't like that. It's a no dribble three, and I know he preaches you got to make jump shooters dribble. Open look. Three from the wing. O'Leary strong. Doyle pushing. Another three. That one's going to be too strong, but right into the hands of Hoffman. Now it's on the floor. Doyle, good step in. The freshman for three, no good. Oh, look at the work underneath. Paolella, but Gray, feisty. Similian, jump stop, no good. Gets his own rebound, hangs. Oh, the scintillating Cedric Similian. That's what makes him so tough. Goes it, go. Goes into the lane, lands on two, misses the shot, but cleans it up with his own rebound. And now he's gonna come out and play defense 40 feet from the basket. 10 for Similian. Up top. Hanging in the air. And that won't go, but underneath, put back is no good. Paolella will go to the line and he'll shoot two. Elijah Avery Turner, I like that the young man is trying to be a little bit proactive. His initials are eat. And I'd like to see him eat a little bit more. He is clearly someone with an offensive skill set. And when he creates shots like that, it allows guys like Paolella rebounds. Now here's a good look. Two free throws for him. Yeah, and, an, and an offensive rebound opportunity. And that's more or less what we saw happen in St. Bernard's first game. A lot of standing around when a shot goes up. And get the foot came off the gas a little bit on some of these rebounding opportunities, but Mark's got his starters back in. Now, one, let's see Jeremiah, because right now Wheeler's gonna have the ball in his hands. And I think this is a look that St. Bernard's is hoping that they can give Amir Gray, you know, some time. So the ball's gonna be in Similian's hands, knowing that Jeremiah's got the two fouls. And that's a luxury that St. Bernard's has, they have multiple ball handlers, so they can put Gray on the bench. But there's Wheeler turning it over. Rockler can't get it to go, O'Leary with the rebound. Similian pulls up, baseline, no good. And they're gonna get Amari Marshall. They're gonna get a foul on the floor. That foul is gonna be on Elijah Avery Turner. That's his first, Wheeler will inbound. A oh, good inbound and Marshall finishes. That's an easy basket. Yeah, Daniel Hand just fell asleep there. Stack play that they run in middle school. Fall away, Rockler no good, but off the hands of Marshall, it'll stay with Hand. But right now, Hand struggling to score the basket. Yeah, they don't really have an identity yet. Pecking order, so to speak. And St. Bernard's done a great job keeping the ball out of Jeremiah's hands. Reach in foul on Amari Marshall as he hit Rockler on the arm. I know Coach Curlin used to call 55 man-to-man -man defense, but one guy never leaves that main guy. And they had Gray chasing Jeremiah around, and now they got Similian on him. That's another luxury the Saints have. If Wheeler steps up the way he has this year defensively in the early going, he's taken on Tony Williams, now he's taken on Jeremiah. They can go Similian, Wheeler, Gray, I mean, there's a lot of athletic guards that they can go and chase if they get into that situation. Yeah, very balanced, interchangeable. Like you mentioned earlier, when Amari Marshall is active on the boards, he and Ryan Outlaw change the dimension of their team from a, from a guard-oriented team to more of a balanced team. Jeremiah has not scored yet. He's at the line with a chance to get his first points of the game. 140 remaining here in the half. And he misses the front end of the one one Justin Outlow is in the ball game now for the Saints. 
Wheeler drives, floats. Ah, oh, beautiful, Tyson Wheeler adding a dimension to his game, not just a shooter. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that the Tigers are out so far on the St. Bernard's guards, but I guess, you know, with no shot clock and trailing, they gotta put some more pressure on them. Marshall with the block out on the perimeter. Jeremiah gets jumped by Outlaw and Similian, and we're gonna get a foul. We're gonna call that one on Similian. That'll put Jeremiah back at the line. Now I have to take issue with Justin Outlaw. All over social media, he and his brother Ryan were touting themselves as the Fro Bros. They both had the big afros. And now Justin has braided his hair. I wanna know how that's going over in the Outlaw household because I thought they were onto something. They were, and if you saw Justin, it should be Ryan in his intro, AFRO Academy, he's very proud of the, of the Fro Bros, so I'm a, little, uh, I'm a little surprised. Justin decided to braid his hair. Oh, look at Similian, hangs. Cedric, oh, Cedric. Splitting the trap, that's what a senior does. He looks comfortable out here. 12 point lead here for the Saints. And it feels like bigger than that. Yeah, mostly because where are these points come, going to come from? From Daniel Hans. And Justin Outlaw's in Chase Jeremiah's face right now. They're switching it off. Now it's Tyson. Hoffman on Wheeler. Jeremiah. Spins, floater, no good, tip, no good. One last attempt, no good. We're at halftime, and the Saints with a 12-point lead, 27-15. George Hathaway is going to be with head coach Mark Jones. We'll see what Coach Jones has to say about a very solid first half from his Saints. George, what does the coach have to say? Coach Jones, you guys have the 27-15 uh, lead right now over Daniel Hand. I mean, the intensity is there, if, if you can uh, kind of elaborate more on that. Yeah, I mean, we just got to keep playing hard and we just got to keep playing smart. I mean, to hold the team to 15 points in two quarters is good, but I mean, it doesn't mean nothing if we don't sustain it and keep it going in the second half. So what is that message? You're up right now by 12, what are you gonna be telling your team in that locker room? That we were up 12 last year and we lost. Well, there you have it. Casey, back to you. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, George. That's well said. That 12 point lead last year evaporated. This year, they're gonna be looking to extend the lead. We're at halftime, 12 point lead for the Saints. We'll be back after this break and some features. You're watching Game Day Live on Monday.com. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeured transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at ambassadorlimo.com. Pave the way for your student's financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. With our players, I mean, you think Tyson, you think Amir, you think Amari, all those guys could be the man on any team. As far as Cedric goes, I mean, he sacrificed a lot. With my role, I just try to like do what Coach Mark asked me to do. If he wants me to play defense, the whole game, I'll play defense. If he wants me to score the ball, I'll score the ball. If he wants me to rebound, I'll rebound. I feel like with my game, it's just an all-around game. So I don't really like look to be in a spot like that. I'm just doing all the dirty work for my guys, and they can shine. You know, he's played for me for four years, going on four years now. So, I mean, he's heard all the speeches and all the talks. So him being a leader and getting some of these new guys to buy in and understand you know, how we operate at St. Bernard's. 
is the huge thing that I've been on him and Tyson about this year. Me coming from Norwich, Connecticut, and me coming to St. Bernard's after that, I feel like it made me really like change as a person. It made me more focused. It made me more disciplined a lot. So I was just trying to tell everybody just to just buy in to what the school's offering because you could get it once. Like this education and the family that St. Bernard's is, is just amazing. The biggest thing is, and we talk about it, you just got to sacrifice. I mean, you've seen Kentucky do it, you know, every year with, under Cal Perry when they have seven, eight pros on their team. You know what I mean? So we just got to sacrifice and understand that winning will get you the other stuff that you want, you know, the accolades and all that other stuff. Now, if you're on a losing team and you're losing, you know, those accolades most likely won't come, you know. And most of our kids, I mean, all of our kids, are really infatuated with winning and they want to win and they want to win an ECC tournament title they want to win a state title so that they're bought in so one thing that you have your sights set on this upcoming season state championship I feel like that Daniel hand loss really really got to everybody and the Tigers will head to the Sun we seeing our two seniors who didn't really play much but they played a very great part in making our team come together and seeing their faces after that game just made me like, just want to get that back. So I'll probably stay state championship. At the day, we pride ourselves on giving our readers the best coverage of local high school sports. Whether in-depth stories, photos and video or columns, our dedicated reporters are on the sidelines covering it all, providing you with the stats, analysis and commentary you've grown to know and trust. Subscribe today at theday.com to receive full access to all our coverage. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeured transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at ambassadorlimo.com. Marshall jumps it up with Favre. Favre wins the tip into the hands of a freshman point guard. So He's extremely talented. It wasn't He wasn't just a, you know, a freshman point guard. He was a, a, played like a seasoned veteran. And I said it at times throughout the tournament run, you know, interviews and things like that. I thought he was potentially the best freshman in the state. Jeremiah to the basket, hangs, and that's a nice move from yeah. a freshman. The challenges for me was just getting used to the speed of the high school level. My teammates were really awesome to me. Like, they were very nice and treated me with a lot of respect, which I didn't expect to have as a freshman. Just cutting Jeremiah, the left hand. This kid's talented, the young Jeremiah. He had a lot of confidence from his teammates, but you know, right away, I don't know if he knew that or not. You know what I mean? Because stepping in as a freshman, and he started pretty much right away. Um, you know, you're playing with kids four years older than you. You know what I mean? That have been with the program for three, four years. So you don't know how you're going to be accepted into the lineup and stuff like that. So I know there's pressure on him to prove himself. Chase Jeremiah picks the dribble up to his brother Hudson. My brother really uh, would tell me to shoot the ball a lot, tell me don't worry about what people think, and my team would always be behind my back. How hard was it for you to learn that he wasn't going to be here this year? Um, definitely disappointing. I know that before, way before he actually made the decision, I knew he was thinking about it, but it was definitely hard when he made the decision for me. Jeremiah for three. And that's Nothing but true for Hudson Jeremiah. Well, it's it's obviously disappointing. You know, you want you want to coach good players. As a coach, you know, you want to coach talented guys. And so, in the back of any high school coach in the CAAC's mind now, with the, with the day and age we live in, it's always a possibility that any of your talented players could up and leave at any minute. You know what I mean? It's just the landscape that we live in. And so, you know, Hudson had to make a decision that he thought was best for him. And, you know, got to respect that as his coach. You know what I mean? So we have to move on now. I mean, it's, you know, obviously we'd love to have Hudson. Don't get me wrong, he's a phenomenal player. But we have a really good group of guys here. You know, so we're, it, it allows other guys to step up and fill a position, a lot of minutes, obviously, that are opened up now. Um, and we have a lot of guys that are really excited about that challenge. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeured transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at ambassadorlimo.com. An impressive first half for the St. Bernard Saints 27-15 over defending state champion Daniel Hand. And coach, 
you know, this is a well-coached hand team that's 2-0 and and beat a good Fairfield prep team, and, and they look like they don't really have any answers. Just talk a little bit about the uh, relentless play of, Saint, of the Saints. Yeah, I know that Daniel Hand didn't want to play at this pace, so really Coach Jones and the Saints have uh, implemented their will in this game and forced the game to be up-tempo. They've gotten this lead, and they've caused Daniel Hand to have to extend that man-to-man -man defense, which actually plays more into St. Bernard's hands. And one of the questions we might have had coming into this game about St. Bernard's was, could they be exploited on the glass? And the resounding answer so far is no, that we got some guys that are gonna crash the glass hard. We're not only gonna get second chance opportunities via rebounds, but we're gonna get every single loose ball. And I know that's what Coach Jones is preaching. I know that what he wants out of them and that's what they need to be able to elevate and beat the good teams in the state tournament. You know, Hand just needs to keep getting good looks. Um, they don't seem to have real comfortable three-point shooters. Uh, if they get better looks, it stops the Saints from getting out in transition, which has been, you know, a function of their success. I, I happen to think that, you know, when Samillion and Marshall are allowed to slash and rebound, you can't beat the Saints because if you sag, Wheeler and, and Gray can knock down threes left and right. So you kind of have to figure out a way of doing a little bit of both, right? Sagging off of the right people, extending on the right people. But if you extend on Gray, we know he'll go by you. And as we saw in the first half, if Wheeler's comfortable taking you off the dribble, that adds a whole dimension to his game. So right now, it, you know, we saw in the first game, uh, East Catholic making a big adjustment at halftime. That's what's gonna have to happen for Daniel Hand. They're gonna have to make an adjustment and then answer the question where the point's coming from. Yeah, and one of the things I would think about, it's early on, so, you know, Coach Eco's trying to figure out his team, but one of the things I would think about here is maybe playing Jeremiah off the ball and trying to get him an opportunity to use his strength inside on some of the guards against St. Bernard's that are maybe a little smaller than him. Yeah, I love the minutes Aiden Doyle gave them at the point. We'll see if they get on the floor at the same time. Similian at 12 and Marshall 8, they led the Saints. Peo Lella and Hoffman with five each for Daniel Hand. The three-point shooting, though, was horrendous. Hand one for seven, and the Saints 0 for eight, and that's not gonna continue. Marshall finds himself trapped. Wheeler for three. Right on cue, the bank is open. Wheeler knocks it down. You couldn't have gotten a worse start, a bank shot three, when you thought you had a chance at a turnover. Yes, they're playing Jeremiah off the ball here. Jeremiah for three. Back iron, no good. Gray, he'll push. Wheeler, stutter step, flies, can't get it to go. Kick out, pump fake, 12 footer from the baseline, no good. And nothing wants to go down for the Hand Tigers right now. Good decision though on the pump fake, take the 15 footer, just can't get it to fall. Dump down, out low. That's a nice move. Ryan out low, playing a little bully ball. Co I was at practice and Coach Jones said to him, so God gave you this body and you need to use it. When you have a, a guy on the block and you have a mismatch, I don't want you deferring, I don't want you kicking. I want you pushing him around and you can see when Outlaw gets it down there in a mismatch, he's very, very comfortable. Once again, another ill-advised three, and another one. Um, nice rebound and put back by Hoffman, however. Some, and needs the points. Yeah, sometimes when you miss so wildly, you don't know where that rebound's coming. Amir Gray floats, can't get it to go, and it'll be knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Saints ball. You know, there's a name. On any given night, Amir Gray can drop 30. Right, any team in the league, he'd be the premier guy. He's so comfortable just running the team, being an offensive, you know, he'll be take a step back. I think that's a huge credit to him as a sophomore. 
Now that's a product of playing for Coach Jones. When he played, he knew that scoring wasn't what the team needed out of him. You know, he could have been a guy that averaged 25 points a game, but instead he averaged in the teens because he did all the other things to make the team win. They are making Jeremiah work. Nice hands by Similian. Up ahead, Gray ahead of everyone. The left-hander's good. What a nice pass by Tyson. Perfect touch. We have a timeout, and this timeout is brought to you by St. Bernard School. St. Bernard School is a Roman Catholic co-ed college prep school for grades 6 to 12, located in Uncasville. We welcome students of all faiths who value academic excellence, personal and spiritual growth, and a commitment to community. St. Bernard ranks among the best private schools in Connecticut with a 98% college acceptance rate and a student to teacher ratio of 12 to one. We offer over 40 clubs and activities and more than 20 sports programs. Visit stbernardschool.org to apply today or request a campus tour. Well, they had a 12 point lead Last year in this same game, you heard Coach Jones say he was super aware of that. They've extended the lead here in the early going of the third period. What does Han need to do right now to get themselves, you know, right the ship? I mean, there's still, you know, there's two schools of thought here. You, you say, we're going to do what we do because we know that the long game is we got to get better at doing what we do in order to win in March. In the short term here, you know, throwing a zone or something to kind of entice St. Bernard's to jack some more threes, we know they're not afraid to shoot. You might get some quick shots up. Right now, anytime St. Bernard's gets it inside, it's a problem. Well, I can't wait now, no matter what happens tonight, the Saints have a game coming up in the coming weeks with Northwest Catholic. That's going to be an interesting one to see how they do against a team that's as long and, and big. They're, they're not going to have seen height like that anywhere. Uh, they're going to see multiple, you know, 6'7", six, 6'6", six, six athletes. We're going to see what that looks like for them. Gray reaches and fouls Rockler on the perimeter. That's a third foul on Gray. Yeah, he's been active today, so that's one of the, you know, a piece of constructive criticism that Mark can give his point guard. You don't want to waste those fouls that far away from the basket. I know he's aggressive, he wants to get the steal, but up 17, just be sound. Forced the Tigers into a turnover. But back to you know Northwest Catholic, the word on the street is they're even longer than the two teams we saw in the first game. So, yes. holy smokes, what a division one. But that's fabulous to see how the Saints will compete against a team like that. I mean, there's a true you know division three team and a division one team. Uh, and that's going to be a fascinating battle just because this Saint team is so athletic, but a lot of what they're used to being able to do, even against a team like Hand, may not be successful against a team like Northwest. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they compete against a true elite big school like Northwest Catholic. Yeah, I think if, if they're able to uh, hit outside shots, they'll be able to hang with them because, you know, that's one of the things that they can exploit against most teams. They have multiple shooters. Tonight, nothing's falling. Nice look underneath, but Wheeler comes from the weak side and blocks Paolella. Doyle made a beautiful pass, but look at Wheeler with a hustle play. They just hustle on the back side. They're really working hard on defense. The starting five has been tremendous on defense for the Saints. Jeremiah has Outlaw on him. You'd think this is a mismatch for Jeremiah off the dribble. Hangs, but blocked by Marshall. Here comes Similian to Wheeler. Wheeler for three. Tice! So nice. Once again, you see Marshall cleaning up a possible mistake, but also, who is Jeremiah gonna dish it off to? I think he, he's just feeling the weight of having to score right now. Marshall left his man, but no option for a dish off. 
Hoffman with the drive, and Gray very aware that he has three, kind of let him go. Wheeler, stutter step, spins, left hand no good. Hand will run. Hoffman. Marshall, up ahead now. Wheeler. No foul, Jeremiah. And a nice job, Amir Gray. Got there first, and tipped it off the hands of Avery Turner. So it'll be Saints ball with a 18 point lead here, three minutes remaining in the quarter. A little sloppy last couple possessions, but uh, the Saints are kind of in cruise control now in terms of uh, they're gonna play loose and goose, loosey goosey a little bit on the offensive ends and make sure that they sprint back on defense. There's a steal by Doyle. The freshman drives to the basket, count it. Elijah Avery Turner will have an extra one after a strong drive to the basket. Yeah, this is what the freshman needs to do a little bit more of and assert his size, he has some length there. And a nice finish, nice touch. Of course, you stick around after this one, eight o'clock tip tonight, NFA and New London in the nightcap of our triple header here at the Day Holiday Classic from Mohegan Sun. Looking forward to see some of the electric players in that one. Gray for three, no good. Doyle on the floor. Up ahead, there's a guy, they gotta see him a little bit late. We're gonna get a foul on the floor as Rockler was trying to get to the basket. He was open, hand didn't see him. Yeah, once again though, hand a little little trap, little zone trap in the half court there, forced wide open three in the corner and enticed St. Bernard's to take it. And they get a run out fast break. What we saw in the first game, some of these missed threes end up being like a turnover, you get a run out. One of two for Rockler. Lead down to 14. Yep, one, three, one trap again. Gray drives, hangs, and we're gonna get a block. That's a big call, because Gray was staring at his fourth. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's the major weakness of the 1-3-1. You cannot let that guy turn the corner and get into that gap. Uh, Gray would have had either that option to score, or he could have dumped it to the weak side. If Han's gonna play that defense, they have to keep the penetration east-west, can't let him go north-south. One more for Gray. And like tightening it up a little bit and kind of forcing St. Bernard's to shoot threes against that may be their best bet here. Second one is good. Cedric is locked in. Heavy pressure on the ball. Hoffman, left-handed floater, no good. Gray will push in the other direction now for the Saints. Shifty, hangs in the air, can't get it to go, but so subtle. Doyle, Euro step, basket is good, and the foul on O'Leary. That was the right call. Four on O'Leary. Fourth foul on O'Leary. Jeremiah back in the ball game. Lead is 13. Wheeler's gonna check back in. He'll probably get O'Leary. No good, Marshall cleans it up. One, three, one. Marshall, quick drive, baseline. Ah, oh, Amari Marshall, that's an aggressive play at the basket. Yeah, just attacking the baseline, using his size advantage, muscle it up. 
They have to. If Daniel Hand's gonna play that defense, they have to force jump shots. Three is short by Hoffman. Outlow, strong rebound, now Similian. Similian knifes his way to the basket, and the Saints push the lead back to 17. Really impressed with Cedric tonight. Looks locked in. In the other direction, Rockler. Under a minute here now, 15 point lead for the Saints. Extending their halftime lead. Nice dump, Marshall buries it from the high post. I love that, right from the elbow. Man, if he's gonna make that, that's tough. Spot the elbow, turn and shoot it. That's a zone killer. Steal by Gray, he has Samillion. Leaves it, and Samillion's gonna shoot two with 22 seconds remaining. That's what Gray, that, he takes a lot of risks, but he gets a lot of rewards. He's got such quick hands. He does come through with a lot of those pockets, picks pockets a lot, and um, Cedric, the body control in the air. A lot of guys you'd see just brick that off the backboard, but kind of clutches, draws that contact, makes sure that he at least goes to the line. Free throw not there for Samillion. Justin Outlow back in the ball game. O'Leary will have a seat. The thing that Coach Jones really likes about this team is that they have so much chemistry with one another. Um, sort of like what Coach Riley said at, after the game and when um, George was asking him about what was said in the locker room. Like, you can, you can criticize each other. You can, you can speak your minds and nobody's gonna get mad. Nobody's gonna get in their feelings. And that's what this St. Bernard's team has going for them. Jump ball, possession arrow favors hand. Well, I talked with Mark Jones as well, and he said, you know, the thing about Tyson and Cedric is that their coach is on the floor for him. You know, they know he, they know the system so well. They know exactly what he's looking to do. So he doesn't have to, you know, micromanage. He can let the players kind of dictate things, and that's so helpful. Yeah, I don't know what it is, Casey, but I've always felt that there's no bigger jump in a high school player's development. Nice shot by Jeremiah than the jump from junior to senior year. Well, Jeremiah buries it. We're at the end of three. The Saints extend their lead. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. At the Connecticut Capitals Baseball Academy, we provide a fun experience for all serious baseball players of all ages through playing competitive summer baseball at a high level by teaching young men how to play the game the right way with a professional approach. Come join the Capital family where we strive for unmatched professionalism, high character building, and a customer-driven experience in a team environment. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeured transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at ambassadorlimo.com. Cedric Similian with 14 and Amari Marshall with 12 leading the way for the Saints as they have a 15 point lead as we head into fourth quarter action. At the end of the third period, we saw Chase Jeremiah knock down a jumper in the lane. That was his first basket of the ball game. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have to know a lot about basketball to know that if anybody told you that Chase Jeremiah was gonna have two points through three quarters, they'd say, uh, give me the Saints and they'll cover. Starting the fourth quarter here with a 15 point lead. The Saints very aware, again, of last year's semifinal loss. They are not gonna take their foot off the pedal. Yeah, and remember, this Daniel Hand team is a brand new team, so they had a great win to open the season against Fairfield Prep, but they're still learning. This freshman out here is playing major minutes on the Mohegan Sun floor in game three of his career. So they're gonna get better. I know I know Coach Eco, he's, this team's gonna be much better by the end of the season. Blocking foul, Samillion will take a moment. Went down hard. You know, going to the timeout, Casey, like 
the, the difference between a junior and a senior in high school. I don't. I know it's th still 365 days between sophomore year and and junior year, but junior to senior, and I think that's been the difference tonight that you have those two seniors out there that have been here, and then you you transfer in another one that's had a lot of experience at on the football field and on the basketball court. So that senior experience is really paying off here tonight for the Saints. And I talked with Cedric Similian, uh about, you know, playing for the TRC football team, undefeated football team, because if you look at the Saints roster, Similian, Outlow, Outlow, Philistine, Eddie, they all were part of that football team that went undefeated. They said it, you know, makes you imminently tougher. Yeah, 100%. That's what, and that's what high school sports is all about, right? We, we see, unfortunately, we do see a lot of specialization now, and and sometimes it is for good reason. But, I mean, the opportunity to play in the state tournament for, for football and now for basketball and then maybe, you know, get on the track and get to a state meet or play baseball and get to the state tournament, that's what high school sports is all about. I've always thought that there's something to be said about playing a sport that you're not the best at. You know, a lot of these kids, they go to specialization in the thing that they're the best at. I think there's value to be had in being a role player or being not the guy, but the next guy. You know, you know, you look at some of these guys on the football team, they're stars on the basketball court, they're good on the football team. Others are stars on the football team and they're good on the basketball court. I think you need to, to learn how to blend yourself. It's, you know, get your adversity when not always being the best player. Yeah, and hearing different voices too, like hearing how a football coach approaches adversity versus a basketball coach versus a baseball coach. You know, everybody has different opinions on how you cope with different things or how you handle a situation. And those are all tools you put in the toolbox. So good for these guys that they had a great football season and now it's carrying over onto the basketball court. Similian will shoot two. And he has not shot the ball well from the free throw line. He's shaking his head. He 0 for 3 so far. And uh, somewhere right now, Shaquille O'Neal is saying, <laughs> Cedric can't shoot free throws. <laughs> He'll make this one. Good hands by Civilian in the other direction now. Open look, Hoffman for three. That's short, tipped. Marshall gets it. Saints are going to run. Marshall. Amari, where did that come from? And a wrinkle. Amari Marshall. Coast to coast. Block to Similian on Jeremiah. Man, I mean, what, what a difference a year makes. I and mean, that last year, Jeremiah was going by people, getting to the rim. I don't know if it's a product of St. Bernard's just being more focused on defense or that Daniel Hand doesn't really have many other options. Catch and shoot three, no good. I think that's the difference. Saint, uh, Madison has, you know, Daniel Hand has not shown any threat really from the three point. So Jeremiah is great at driving and kicking. There's really been no kicking. Oh, Tice with the left. Yeah, hands one for 12 from three. So there's no real threat there. And Jeremiah crashes the boards and finishes. And we're gonna get a timeout. Daniel Hand, it is a full timeout. And this timeout is brought to you by St. Bernard School. St. Bernard School is a Roman Catholic co-ed college prep school for grades 6 to 12 located in Uncasville. We welcome students of all faiths who value academic excellence, personal and spiritual growth, and a commitment to community. St. Bernard ranks among the best private schools in Connecticut with a 98% college acceptance rate and a student to teacher ratio of 12 to 1. We offer over 40 clubs and activities and more than 20 sports programs. Visit stbernardschool.org to apply today or request a campus tour. 
Six minutes remaining, Saints up 17 here in game two of the day, Holiday Classic. Eight o'clock tip, New London in NFA, and it'll be time for the sophomores of New London to step up. One of the things that I think has really changed the evolution from his junior year to his senior year has been Tyson Wheeler's on-ball defense. We just had the question raised. It's something that I had said to our Mike tomorrow, watching the NFA game, they put him on Tony Williams to start the game, and he stepped up and played very solid on-ball defense, and that was something last year teams attacked him. Whoever Wheeler's guy was, they attacked him. It's clear he made a concerted effort in the offseason to get himself into ideal shape and taking his on-ball defense very seriously. That combined with him getting to the basket and not just being a spot shooter makes him a much more complete player. Well, think about what did this team need to do better to get past the stage they were last year, right? That was what fueled their development over the summer, the fall, till now. And obviously, that was something that Tyson had to do a lot better. And as I mentioned before, Coach Jones is gonna give you some freedom on offense, but you need to be sound man to man. Wheeler tips it back, out low kicks, Similian drives, and Cedric Similian has played like a star tonight. You get a little touch foul out on the perimeter from out low. Yeah, I think, you know, Mark, Mark also believes that, you know, 32 minutes isn't really a lot of time. Um, he's like, that's not that much time. They can play the whole game. So, you know, he wants those guys to be in shape enough where they can play 32 minutes that he doesn't have to use his bench if it's a tight game. So, in order to play this style, Outlaw and Marshall just dominating the glass for St. Bernard's and Marshall will ultimately go to the free throw line and shoot two. You're right about that, it's, you know, their front five could play the whole game, he could run them. Uh, we talked about incorporating big bodies. He's gonna be 10 deep when all of his players are eligible and active. It's gonna be, a, you know, that's a tough incorporation, 10 players when no one in that starting five necessarily needs you know, time off. But so. if that's the mentality, Casey, that you're gonna play 32, then when you get a rest, it's a bonus. But the intensity is never gonna wane. That's what Mark wants out of the team. He wants that 32 minutes intensity, even if you're only playing two minutes. Outlow wanted that one back. He grabbed the offensive rebound and couldn't get it to fall. And we're seeing it here, you know, there's no let up on this man-to-man -man defense right now. Jeremiah spins, kicks. Great defense from the Saints, helping. Long three-pointer, no good though. Markovitz with a rebound, Doyle for three. No good, Marshall, look at them wanna run. Here goes Gray, off to the races. And good defense though, by Hoffman. Hoffman hangs and cannot get it to go, and now the Saints will run. Up ahead it goes again to Gray. He's got Jeremiah on his hip, and Amir Gray scores. And they can just run, can't they? Practice, I watch their practice, and they look for every opportunity. They leak, and they like to leak, because they want to push, which means they can be susceptible to giving up offensive rebounds like we saw against NFA. Oh, beautiful move, and Gray will shoot too. One of us, obviously, one of the downsides to leaking out you don't have everybody on the glass, but if Marshall and Outlow and you know Similian are cleaning up rebounds, Gray and Wheeler, they'll leak out all the time. We talked about Northwest Catholic. You know, they might not have the luxury of leaking out against Northwest. They might have to send everybody and you know, they might have to try to get six and seven guys to go to the to the rim against Northwest. Oh, absolutely. And but that's the evolution of the process. Like you don't necessarily have to leak out to run the floor well. Um, that's timing knowing when to start sprinting and being in shape to be able to sprint to the right spot every possession. 
You know, and I mentioned Northwest only because they're perhaps the longest, biggest team in the state. But Ridgefield, Immaculate, these are all teams that are gonna challenge, you know, what this Saints team ultimately becomes. Yeah, and they, you know, they got moved up to the Division II tournament, which, you know, the formula is under lock and key, I guess, at the CIA, see how that happened. But I think they're challenging themselves with the Division I type schedule so that the Division II won't be overwhelming. This will, you know, this is the first time they'll be in Division II, so. The only recipe held in more secret is my grandmother's meatballs. <laughs> compared to what the uh, moving up and down the divisions look like. Saints empty in the bench here with four minutes remaining. So we're gonna get Jacob Widener in the game. Widener with a steal. Grudzian up ahead, running the floor. And the freshman got a little too excited. Shen Adams on the floor as well, the sophomore. So Adams, Grudzian, O'Leary, Outlow, and Widener on the floor for the Saints. And you can see that Grudzi, and he has that speed, he pushes the ball, he knew what he wanted to do with the ball. Yeah, Mark was excited about him. He, he, he sees that, you know, he hopes he grows, if he grows a little bit too, because he's got good size for a freshman. That's, I mean, he's got a strong body, a strong frame. Doyle for three. Good! Aiden Doyle knocks down the triple. We're gonna get a moving screen against Widener. Hey, you don't get a lot of minutes when you get them. I like bang your body into people. I love it. Make yeah. those minutes memorable. And, and uh, a savvy and mature reaction from Grudzian. He he took the blame. He said, "I I I used the screen too early. I caused you. Whether or not it was true or not." That, that's a good teammate. That's a great teammate. Nice move by Doyle with the left hand. Hand within. Oh, Grudzi and floater. That is a nice move. Freshman, Ty Grudzi and knocks it down. You can see why they're high on him. The other direction, O'Leary blocks Maynard. Markovitz. Loose. Eventually, Daniel Hand, Andrew Anabugo, and underneath, Markovitz. Anabagu lost it. It went right to Markovitz. Those are the bounces you'd like to have. Nice hands. Anabagu gets the steal for Hand. Now Doyle in the other direction, and we're going to get an offensive foul. O'Leary stepped in, that time he got the charge. Look how happy the bench is, you gotta love, whenever you get it, you know, charges are one of those things that teams, you know, inspire teams. Nothing gets the bench up more excited than when someone steps in and draws the charge. And they are loving it on the Saints bench. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the big, it's the dunk of defense, getting that charge. I like that, the dunk of defense. Steal from Ty Maynard. Doyle for three, in and out. Tipped, Grudzi and running, ahead of the pack. Easy layup on the feed from O'Leary. Heading down to two minutes, 20 point St. Lee. Anabogu can't get it to go. Left hand zip. Aye, it's Mrs. O'Leary's boy at the rim. And that's gonna get a timeout to get some more Saints into the ball game. So, Sabian Melendez and Desmond Powers will be checking in for the Saints. Powers, a freshman. Melendez, a sophomore. Anthony DeMarco, also into the game for the Saints. And Zane Baton's in the game as well. 
Couldn't have gone better for Coach Jones tonight. Probably would have liked to see some more three-pointers fall, but defensively on the glass, the loose ball game, he's gonna be happy with that effort. I'm happy for some of these kids here, like Powers and Melendez, getting a chance to play at Mohegan Sun. Uh, Melendez, who we see here with the ball, Savion Melendez, is actually a Colchester kid. Uh, his sister, Ixaria, was a star at New London High School, X, and baby bro is getting some run at the sun. Yeah, and Coach Riley said that to me earlier this week, you know, only a few teams get to win a championship. Where are you gonna get your other moments yes. in the season that make that memorable? And man, this is a memory these kids will have forever now. Desmond Powers, a fab freshman at St. Bernard's, a starter on their excellent soccer team and quite a pitcher. He was uh, teammates with my son, uh, AJ, and uh, just played some great competitive summer baseball and Powers, three-sport athlete for the Saints. So here's a chance for these kids to get some time and you know, like you said, here's a moment, no matter whatever happens, if they don't get another minute the rest of the year, they got a minute at the sun. Three, no good. Rebound by Maynard, and we're under a minute here, remaining in the ball game. Three, short, rebound. Saints are going to push. Three off the front rim. Nice hustle rebound. The kick. Three is good. Anthony DeMarco with a triple. Coach Outlaw's Outlaw excited on the sideline. The triple. Right back in the other direction now. The Saints gonna push with three seconds remaining. Two, last shot of the game's gonna be short, but Samillion with 16 and five rebounds. Marshall with 14 and eight. Lead the way, a resounding 63-38 win for the Saints. Taking care of the rematch with Daniel Hand, who knocked them out of the semifinals last year at Waterford at the X as the Tigers ran roughshod over the ECC. A good win for the Saints here. Make their names in the state. Definitely people will look at this score and say, really? That's a good win for the Saints, not only avenging you know that loss from last year, but recognizing statewide a win over a class program like Hand. Yeah, and also the way they did it, that's the way that Coach Jones wants his team to play. Tenacity on defense for 32 minutes, rebounding the basketball, getting after the loose balls. He'll live with some of those long three-point misses, some of those wild shots, but you cannot make mistakes on defense and you gotta keep bringing that energy. Tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Ambassador Limo. With more than 40 years in the transportation business, Ambassador Limo is the number one chauffeur transportation company in Connecticut. Whether you're looking for a night on the town, wedding transportation, or reliable service to and from the airport, Ambassador has you covered. Check them out at ambassadorlimo.com. George Hathaway has our Ambassador Limousine Player of the Game. Thank you, guys. Here I am with Ambassador Limo Player of the Game. Cedric Samillion, I mean, you had 16 points, five rebounds today. Everybody's showing you some love. So how big is this win for you guys today? Oh, it's pretty big for us because last year we came out and we fell short. But without, without, see, we got new kids on the team. They came to help us. We got my guys that returned. They was killing. It's just a team effort. And you had the whole student section here for you guys. How much was that important, you know, kind of going forward to have some of your fans here? Um, I feel like we have the best fans in the ECC. They came out and showed love. St. Burns community, you know. Just like that, you know. Big team win here for you guys against a team that kind of beat you last year in the semifinals. So kind of going forward, how are you guys going to be prepared? Try to get better every day. I feel like Mark Jones pushes us to our ability. So we're going to be good. We're going to be prepared when they play. We're going to be fine. Awesome. Thank you, Cedric. And let's go on over to your head coach, Mark Jones. Coach, a big win here today. But how big is your defense kind of moving forward? Oh, it's extremely big. I mean, we work on it every day. Uh, transition defense and rebounding. And they really bought in today. I mean, it was a big stage playing at Mohegan Sun. 
and the moment wasn't too big for them. Kind of moving forward, tough schedule up and coming, but how are you going to use this momentum kind of going forward? Just keep winning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there you guys have it today. Uh, we just sent it back to Casey, but congratulations on the win, everybody. Yeah. 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 So let's take a look at the freshly squeezed juice, and how did the Saints give them their grades? How'd they do? No, sharing is caring. They, they are very unselfish. You didn't see a lot of people jacking up threes and over dribbling. So A for that. Junkyard St. Bernard, A+. Plus. So that was one of the big questions. Could hands exploit uh, maybe a little bit more ruggedness uh, on the glass and on, in the loose ball battle? And St. Bernard's won that resoundingly. And don't be wasteful. They were able to play their top five whenever they wanted to. Didn't get into foul trouble, so another A there. A great performance from the Saints, and uh, the sky's the limit. Yeah, Mari Marshall did great work for them. Samillion Wheeler, you know, defensively, really. Wheeler taking the, uh, the mantle of on-ball defender against Jeremiah. Everything that the Saints touched eventually turned the goal. They, you know, they like you said, they shared the ball so well. A little bit of everything, and I admire, you know, hand. I think what you said really resonates, which is, they're looking to be good in March, which means you stay the course and you do the things that you do well and you have to make improvements in the areas where you struggle. So this is a, a loss that they can go to school on, you know, get better. Uh, this Saints team is a team that's very good and they're not gonna see a lot of teams like them. This is a, a team that has unique athleticism and, and, and uh, versatility and depth. But moving forward, I think this is a, a game where uh, Coach Eco is gonna go to school and more importantly, Will he have a baby before the next game? <laughs> yeah, his wife Taylor is holding tight and our uh, thoughts are with them and hopefully that baby comes in between games. <laughs> well, we got one more, we're not done. We have an eight o'clock tip, New London and NFA. So you gotta come on back for game three of the day holiday classic live from Mohegan Sun. Big win for the Saints. You've been watching game day live on theday.com.